Hi, everybody. <coughs> I'm sorry, it is, wow, it's bright. It really is bright. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Taskin Akpınar. Uh, I, I work for Amazon, uh, and I think we are one of the earliest uh, uh, adapters of DentOS. Uh, and I'll talk about, like, during this presentation, if you just go to the next slide. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about what we did uh, during this past year. Uh, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do in the short term, in the long term, and very, very long term plans and roadmap. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Please do stop me if you have any questions. I'll try to answer as much as I can. There are more smarter people here. I'm pretty sure they'll help me out also. Um, we called it the 2023 this year as a turning point for Dent, uh, for a reason. Uh, it really is the, the turning point for Dent. Uh, the release, Cynthia, can I go a little bit? Uh, and by the way, does anybody know why we are using the code name for Cynthia? The first one was Arthur, the second one was uh, Bibblebox, the third one is uh, Cynthia. These are all coming from the Hitchhiker's Gui Guide to Galaxy, the characters from the book. We really do like the book. The fourth one is going to be something to do with uh, D. So the, the third one is Cynthia. Uh, it's, it's really different from the previous years. Uh, in, in previously, we used to have uh, releases maybe one year apart, 14, 15, uh, 16 months apart. This year, we decided to go ahead and do it a little bit differently. Uh, we want to go ahead and, yes, we want to have new features, but also let's go ahead and start focusing on the um, stability and deployability. Uh, and to be able to go ahead and show you uh, during the, we have a workshop, uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate some features to you on the real switches. We, we took the uh, community's release, put this on, this on these boxes. We are going to show you it really does work. There's no modification. It's just really take the uh, release, put it on the box, it works. And to be able to do that, uh, we really focused on stability and uh, deployability. Three different releases. The first one is, uh, it came out in March of this year. TC Flower included the features. We updated the kernel to uh, more LTS release, uh, a more recent LTS release, 515. Um, but we also include the, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, test framework. It did have a, a, a limited set of tests, 85 test suites. I'm calling it limited, but it's still very, very, very sizable. But uh, it uh, provided the groundwork for us to go ahead and automate the entire testing uh, environment, make sure that the functionality is working, regressions are not happening, val validate the functionality in a continuous way. Uh, the features were already uh, included in the uh, Linux kernel 15. We, we are upstream, upstreaming these. Like we had eight, uh, .1x support, QoS, IPv6, uh, IGMP snooping, egress uh, policy. We had these features manually validated, but we made a big change in the releases, uh, starting with the Cynthia release. If your functionality is not fully tested, as a part of the automated test suite that we included in the uh, Cynthia, we uh, we assume that that functionality is not tested. If we know it's it's do, it, it, it does work. I mean, we are manual validating. We have man manual tests that we are running. But if you don't have the integration uh, into the test framework, that we cannot run it manual uh, automatically uh, as a part of our CI/CD program. That feature is called early access feature. You can use it, you can go around the test cases by yourself, but it is not a part of real Cynthia release. Can you go to the next one? Uh, for the next release, uh, it came out in uh, June 22nd. Uh, well, as you can see, the focus was 214 new test suites. From 85, we went up to 240 new ones. And also, we automated the test cases for the early access features so that the, the, the releases the features can be verified automatically. Uh, the next release that came out about a month ago now, uh, we've updated the Debian 10 because Debian 9 is retired. Uh, Debian 10 is the uh, most, is, is a, a version that's supported by the entire Linux community. Uh, so we are on Debian 10 now. We've also added, we heard you guys, the getting the hardware, up the, uploading the, the image into a device, may take some time, because you have to go down order from the, uh, what do you call, a vendor. Uh, well, why don't we just go down and do the virtualization support? So if you go to our web page now, you'll have the instructions on, okay, this is how you can take the community release image, 
it's not hardware focused image. It's, it's the community release image. You can just go down, put it on a virtual machine. It will work because it's Linux, and you'll see the instructions. It's fairly straightforward. I, I, urge, I urge you to go ahead and start using it. It's fairly intuitive. Uh, we've enabled also VRF, and unsurprisingly, we added more test cases. So if you look at the entire por test portfolio, portfolio right now, uh, we are covering fully automated method uh, our releases in a very nice way in a, in a CI/CD environment. Also, we have added additional uh, test cases for ACMP, LACP, RSTP, uh, RSTP, VRRP. We are focusing on stability and deployability with the Cynthia release. Well, we want to go ahead and uh, keep this momentum going for the two, uh, 2024. Uh, the next next version, it's going to be something like deep, deep, deep thought or in some way with D. Uh, but again, Hitchhiker's Guide, Guide to Galaxy. Uh, we, are, we are thinking about, we are focusing on adding additional features and usability and deployability. If you go to next one, it's going to take a little bit different, uh, uh, what do you call, format. We are going to talk about architectural changes, uh, some improvements that we are uh, uh, planning. Uh, we are going to look at some forward-looking features and, of, for, of course, a, a, a few additional protocols we are going to support. Uh, first of all, this, this section is, uh, I've got a lot of questions during yesterday's, uh, what do you call, boot sessions. Uh, what are we doing? We, we, they go, going forward, uh, because there's, there's, there's talks about, that, hey, you guys are going to support Psy. Yes. But I, before, I wanna go, uh, before we get into the Psy discussion, I want to talk about the switch dev. We love it. Like you, when you load the uh, operating system, it is Linux. There is no proprietary database that you have to manage. There's no uh, 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 interfaces. There is no nothing other than Linux. And we're going to go ahead and show it during the workshop about that one. Uh, it is fully integrated into the Linux kernel. So if you are going to implement a feature, you make the changes in the kernel. It becomes a part of the community. Everybody in the world, literally everybody, billions and billions of devices use this functionality. It becomes available. You don't have to go ahead and change anything on, on your uh, environment. The uh, standard applications do work. So if, if you want to go ahead and do IF config, it goes through the uh, kernel regardless of which device you're using. The kernel that, and the components that you integrate and build it is going to take care of if you are using switch, just like uh, Sean said. Uh, if, it, if you're using a switch, it'll work. If you're using a server, it, it'll work. The same commands, everything is the same. Uh, so you're not modifying anything from the Linux if you don't need to. Uh, you don't need to go down and write any new applications. Uh, no abstraction layer overhead. Linux is Linux. Everything goes through kernel. You're good. Next one, if you don't mind. Well, also it does mean a little bit um, questionable. I, should, I wouldn't say it's not very efficient. It is, you're, at the end of the day, you're, you're modifying the Linux kernel. And if you're uh, using, uh, modifying the Linux kernel, you know the process. Uh, implementation time is one thing, but when you're trying to upstream that code back to the community, it literally affects hundreds of billions of devices. So community is very sensitive about Hey, you need to go down and make sure that it's working. It's, it's, it's very common that you go through a code review cycle, cycle like four times, five times, six times, depending on who's reviewing it. And I fully support that process. Uh, we all do, because you don't want to like, break everybody else's implementation. This is the kernel that everybody is us using for all servers and all devices. But it could be a lengthy process. That means your time to market is sometimes a little bit slower. Uh, it's not. Um, what they call very wanted, but it is the way it is. Uh, it is much harder than just making an application code change and like updating the kernel um, application and just release the uh, application. It's you have to go through the kernel community's very strict standards to make sure that you're not breaking anybody else. Um, we want to go ahead and accelerate this process. We don't want to give up on the switch dev. It's very important, but we at the same time we want to be able to go then provide the people the ability of, um, if you want to write applications, uh, application space programming, just do it. Uh, <laughs> I am sorry about that. Uh, I have meetings. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, if you want to still go there and use the stock Linux distributions, use them. Switch dev is still here. We, we don't want to give up on that one. We want to make, uh, have the backward compatibility. But at the same time, if you want to go ahead and be able to do application programming, uh, do fast time, uh, fast, uh, quick time to market, you should be able to go ahead and do it. Uh, at the same time, keep, keep in mind that we want to keep the hardware resource requirements at the minimum. We love Switch Dev for that one. You can put it on a camera, on an IoT device with no problem. Some unless, uh, uh, unless other, like, unlike other uh, net, uh, network operating systems, that is very small. We want to keep that. And I'm going to yeah, come to that one. Next one, please. So, well, we are in OCP. What, what else is there? What, what, else, what, what better is there? We have OCP Sci. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's mostly written for dis disaggregated uh, DCs, mostly. Uh, it's a user space API. A lot of companies do support it, uh, like uh, Marvel, Broadcom, Mellanox, Cisco, Juniper. There are lots of SI uh, applications, uh, packages available. Uh, you can just go ahead and download it from the vendors. You can implement, uh, integrate into your or link into your application. Your time to market is much much faster. Next one. Um, we want to. Our goal is we want to keep the existing dance features and processes, keep Linux kernel and switch dev in place. We are not getting rid of it. It's just providing an additional hardware interface if you choose to use so. If, if you choose to use it. Uh, you still support, we, we're still gonna support uh, Linux applications. You, you don't have to go down uh, modify the Linux applications if you don't want to. You can write your new applications now, it's, 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 it's valid. But if you wanna keep the existing implementations for the Linux packages, just keep them as they are. Uh, however, we don't wanna go ahead and use like resource hungry applications, databases like Red, Redis DB or SyncD. We don't want to introduce them so that we can keep the package size, the, the requirements for the memory and CPU at a minimum for the dent. Uh, and we want to make sure that it is hardware agnostic. So whatever the device you're using, it's still Linux, cameras and scales and refrigerators and switches and servers, it still is Linux. Except that maybe you, you, you're, to, uh, what do you call, interfacing with another device using Sci and switch dev. Uh, I don't want to get into too much details. I'm going to go ahead and up upload a few documentation uh, this week uh, on our webpage. Uh, you're, you're going to see that there is a, a new component called switch manager. It's, it's, it's a user uh, code mode application. It does the API transition from switch dev to Sci. Uh, you don't need to go ahead and use it if you don't want to. Uh, everything is going to happen on the, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, it will do the uh, API a switch over between the switch dev, dev and Sci. It will do the polling and synchronization. And also it's going to do some excellent, like a simple function of like the initialization. It's going to take care of everything for you. Uh, you're still going to be using Linux. Everything's in the behind the, behind the screen, uh, behind the uh, covers. Uh, I don't want to go into the details of this, uh, what do you call, uh, s slide too much. You'll see the documentation uploaded this week. But uh, interface is done for you by using something called uh, Switch Manager. Can you go to the next one? Quickly. Uh, going forward in the uh, D-release version 4, we are going to update Debian 10 to Debian 12. Uh, it, it is going to give us more longer term uh, supportability. We are going to introduce a few changes to the uh, PoE. LLDP is a, a big deal. Uh, when you uh, plug your LLDP enabled device, it will be able to go ahead and communicate with the, the switch, for example, and uh, uh, negotiate what the power level is it, it needs. It can uh, change even the power level it uses later on. Uh, we are going to introduce PoE++ support so that we can support devices up to 90 watts uh, per port. Uh, we are going to have a firmware upgrader. We've heard you guys, and it's, it's, this is not new. Upgrading the firm, firmware is a pain. Uh, downloading the firmware is pain. Uh, how do you manage it? Make sure that it's, it is working, it, it does all retries. Um, we want to provide the functionality for doing the firmware uh, update updated for you. Uh, we do support dot one x but we want to test additional, we want to introduce additional tests so that we can harden it with more protocols, uh, more authentication methods so that we can provide a, a wider functionality. We, we have a high confidence that we know it is going to work, but again, our uh, mode is, if you don't have a test case, we don't say it's really running for us. So we, we want to accelerate that. Uh, and also we want to talk about the Yocto migration. 
Uh, and there's a few functionals like MC, like MMS, TP. I keep going on those. Uh, let's go oh, too much. <laughs> uh, some uh, long-term features that we are talking about is PoE kernel integration. Uh, we we want to increase our integration with the kernel. Uh, dual partition boot is very important for. Uh, we've heard you. The, the we want to be able to update one partition while the par second partition is uh, still serving the functionality and switch the uh, to the new ne updated partition with minimal interaction uh, interruption. Uh, we want to provide component upgrades for security. It's very very important. Instead of just uploading the entire OS, you, you'll be able to go down do uh, what do you call package updates. We're, we're going to. Uh, it's called package streaming. Um, ZTP, open config support, multicast routing, security updates is what's in our, our roadmap. I'm sorry, I'm, I rushed. I apologize, but uh, looking forward to for the new features. If, please visit us our on that dent.dev website. There's plenty of information. The images are there. You can download virtual or physical devices. You can use the same image. Uh, repositories are open source. Uh, you can uh, access them on GitHub. And if you have questions, I urge you to uh, drop an email to TSC uh, list. I will receive it, and a bunch of people here in the room also are going to receive it. And if you if you want to talk to me, you can still go ahead and send me an email. This is my email address on Amazon. Uh, I'll happy to answer your questions. Any questions? Too much information? I apologize. It's it's a lot. I know. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I know it's early in the morning. I appreciate you stopping by.